What's happening, Polite Society? I hope you had a good week. If you're here for the first time, welcome to my channel. I am Alan. On Saturdays, we have been looking at the second wave of the women's movement. Today, we're going to be looking at perhaps one of the most unhinged female activists of them all from that time period. So let's delve in. Because of her actions, Valerie Solanus is one of the more infamous and recognizable faces of the egalitarian second wave. Born to a father who was a bartender and a mother who was a dental assistant, Valerie is said to have had a rough go. Solanus may have been a victim of incest and physical abuse. As a young minor, she became pregnant two times. Both of the children were taken away from her and raised elsewhere. At age 15, she became homeless and engaged in woman-female erotic unions, prostitution, and begging. Between 1965 and 1967, Solanus wrote her SCUM manifesto. SCUM stands for the Society for Cutting Up Men. Valerie envisioned a world without men in which responsible, thrill-seeking females ruled. Here's a quote. The few remaining men can exist out there puny days dropped out on drugs or strutting around in drag or passively watching the high-powered females in action, fulfilling themselves as spectators, vicarious livers, or breeding in the cow pasture with the toadies. Or they can go off to the nearest friendly neighborhood self-termination center, where they will be quietly, quickly, and painlessly gassed to death. Of course, what Solanus is most well known for is being the woman who tried to kill Andy Warhol. Her life, and particularly the circumstances leading up to this event, are the basis for the 1996 film I Shot Andy Warhol, starring Lily Taylor. Jose Diaz, curator of the Andy Warhol Museum, said at the time of the attempt on his life, Warhol was one of the most recognized artists in the United States. Historical author Sarah Pruitt wrote that Warhol's influential pop art paintings, such as those of Campbell's soup cans and Coca-Cola bottles, made him internationally famous. In late 1965, Valerie attempted to convince the popular artist to produce a play she had written. In her mind, Solanus believed that Warhol had promised to make a film based upon it. And he never promised to produce her play. He did, however, give her a role in one of his movies. At some point, Warhol misplaced the manuscript for Valerie's play. Solanus became convinced that he had, in fact, not lost the play, but wanted to use her ideas and pass them off as his own. She repeatedly tried calling Warhol's office with threats and demands until he stopped taking her calls altogether. On June 3, 1968, Solanus went to Warhol's new office. Armed with a 32 Beretta, she opened fire on both Warhol and an art gallery owner who was with him, and then she left the scene. For a brief time, Warhol was declared dead, but he was later revived by physicians. The other victim was not seriously injured. Hours after the crime, Solanus surrendered herself to a police officer. She was tried and sentenced to three years, including time served, and she was released in 1971. Let's turn to criticism. I'm not sure if Solanus was being tongue-in-cheek in that quote I cited earlier. It's a little difficult to say, given her mental makeup. If that motion was meant to be taken seriously, it is of course a laughably bad idea and completely untenable. The entire infrastructure is run by men. Our electricity, plumbing, Building structures and roads are first of all constructed by men, but they are also maintained and repaired by them. The number of women who work in these fields is extremely small. Society would implode and collapse if men were relegated to being dropped on drugs and strutting around in drag. Also, as I've mentioned many times before, the law enforcement and military fields are vastly overrepresented by men. Men are the enforcers of the law. In fact, having women as enforcers weakens both our police and military forces. From a biblical perspective, it is in fact an abomination for a woman to be a police officer or soldier, as it is an example of a woman putting on men's clothing. But that's a different topic for a future video. The point here is that both from an infrastructure and law and order standpoint, qualified males are not simply helpful for a well-oiled society. They are in fact necessary. And her suggestion that men should self-terminate themselves is disgusting, appalling, and hateful. If it was meant to be a joke, it was distasteful and unfunny. Nevertheless, let's be in prayer for those who are being deceived by the teachings of the women's movement. Let's pray that the Spirit of God will work in their hearts so that they will turn to the Lord Jesus Christ as he is freely offered in the gospel. The sources that I use for this upload are available in the video description below. All right, that's a wrap for now, ladies and gents. If you want to share your own thoughts, be sure to do so in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching everyone. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. 
If you like the content here, you can subscribe by clicking on the icon on the bottom right. Then you can hit the bell for notifications. I upload a new video every Wednesday and every Saturday. Have an awesome week. And for my brothers and sisters in the Lord, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all always. I will see you all in the next video. God's blessings on your week.